Hideki Matsuyama. I've got no doubt he's going to go down as one of the greatest of all time. And today we're going to have an in-depth look at his swing, what makes it so great, and also what may be the cause of his recent back or neck injury. Also, if you like what you see, please check the description below and there is a special discount code where you can get your swing analyzed just like Hideki here. So if we look on the left hand side, we'll look at his posture, quite upright with the spine with a little bit of bend there, which I like. I don't like when we see guys too bolt upright. It just gets the spine in a compromised biomechanics position. And then if we look, a little bit of knee bend and then those arms hang nicely below his shoulder blade. Now I would say he's probably got quite a lot of knee bend there, but that's sort of unique to Hideki. Probably say he's a little bit tight in his hamstrings just looking at that. And if we look from face on, you'll see very unique, very, very weak with that left hand. Usually guys will see a lot stronger with that left hand. And you look at Dustin, you'll see all that glove logo. Whereas Hideki, that glove logo is pointing right at the target. Very unusual, but you'll see how that influences swing. But he makes it work for himself. Don't copy that grip if you slice it. Absolutely not. So let's see on the takeaway. You'll see Hideki. First thing to go is those wrists. Sets those wrists nice and early. Nice one-piece takeaway where that butt of the club is pointing at his belly button. If we look from face on, you'll see that first move is actually, when we see from face on, that first move is actually his right knee just moving inwards. Just a little trigger move to create the momentum, love that. So after that little move, you'll see that first move of the wrists just start to set. So trigger move knee in, and then those wrists just set as he then shifts laterally to that trail side. You can see there, it's all sort of one movement. You'll see the head starts to move a little bit back. This is why face on can be a great way to analyze the swing because we won't necessarily see that from down the line. You'll see just sets the wrist there. Lovely, lovely position. I'll just draw a line on that hip and you can see how much he has moved laterally. There you go. Really love that position. Great way to create power, that little bump of the hip. And then that one piece takeaway, keeping the club out in front of him. Nice and neutral face position matching the back line. You can see how upright Hideki is in that posture there. A little bit unusual for quite a tall guy. I think he's about six foot. Well, tall for me because I'm only sh quite short. So you'll see, let's bring him back. A little bit unusual in today's game. It's a throwback almost to how we were taught in the early 2000s of really keeping that right knee flex and not a lot of hip rotation, which may be contributing to that back injury or neck injury. However, I think that is more later on in the swing, which we'll really, really see. So you'll see he keeps that flex in that knee, and then look, very, very little rotation through those hips. He starts to set the club, that right elbow is gonna start bending. Now, really, for a driver, quite deep, and quite upright with the shaft. I think that a lot has a lot to do with how upright his torso is, but most guys you'd see with a little bit of a flatter plane. I'll just knock the lines off there so we can see more clearly. Let's have a look here. You'll see as he's, he's bumped initially with that right hip over to that right side, and now it'll start rotating. You can see there a little bit of rotation into the hip although we're not seeing a lot of that belt buckle. So what's happening is really rotating that femur into the hip socket. So don't be fooled by thinking the hips aren't rotating just because you can't see that belt buckle. He's really rotating into that hip socket, which creates a lot of power. So I'll get rid of those lines. You can just see, look how that hip is rotating. And even though we don't see that le that trail leg straightening. And you'll see there, if we get him to a similar position where that lead arm's parallel, quite a lot of wrist set there. And we mentioned before that that shaft is quite upright compared to some guys. 
and we'll take him a few frames further up again. I'm going to just get rid of those lines. So you'll see starts. I mean, you don't see a lot now of hip rotation here. Can you see how stable that right hip is? Just not a great, great deal of hip rotation. Going to have a tremendous amount of flexibility in that trail hip for him to allow that rotation. Very common, you see, with the anatomy of Asian players. That's why they're, they're able to do things like deep squat very easily. Um, you think culturally in Japan, it's often where you sit down with like, your legs crossed. So it's tremendous amount of ro rotation ability in the actual hip socket. A lot of guys, especially Europeans, would really struggle with that just from an anatomy perspective. You can see there's very little rotation there. So if we look from down the line, just watch that hip, and you see how it's not moving a lot once we get sort of lead on parallel to the top of the swing. There's not a lot of guys that are going to be able to maintain that knee flex and get in that position. I think that's a lot of culturally and just um, anatomy from a regional standpoint of being Asian. We do see a lot of Asians and also um, like Russian um players or people having a lot more flexible hip than say a European or Celt, often called a Celt hip where we don't have that mobility. So that's why he's able to do that. Not something that we'd see a lot of players have the physical capabilities to do. It's very interesting. Don't mean to bore you with that, but let's get rid of those lines now. And what you'll see from here at Hideki, you'll start to see this right arm start to so get behind his body. And what that's going to do is loop the club back this way. Now, watch this. You'll see this club start. Can you see that little move there? That club starts to loop back as that trail elbow starts to work behind his body. Now, if we saw this in a lot of amateurs, we'd see very much an over-the-top move. But with Hideki, we do not see that. And that is primarily, I think, because I was boring you with those hips, is I think that's because... Watch here, watch that movement here, down, and that amazing rotation through this trail hip and this lead hip, and it enables him to really load into the ground, that hip's really rotating, and then what that enables him to do is watch how that lead elbow, sorry, trail elbow, appears very, very early. Just look at this, look how that lead trail sorry trail elbow appears very very early and you'll see from down the line what's going to happen is you've got that funky little move where that club head works back towards him most people come over the top but then what happens is because of that rotation in the lower body then that elbow starts to pinch in towards the lead elbow and then his wrists start to work into flexion, his lead wrist works into flexion. And what that does, it helps shallow the club face, sorry, the club shaft, and also start to strengthen the club face. You can see Hideki's quite open at the top here, but that move of driving those hips first, that elbow pinching towards the lead elbow, and then that left wrist moving. If we look, I'll just zoom in, watch how much that left wrist moves into flexion in su such a short period of time to help shallow that club face, sorry, club shaft, and really rotate that club face on the downswing. Very, very unique move, and it's not something that a lot of guys would be able to do. And there is also one more unique aspect to it that we're going to look at specifically around this neck. So what I want you to see is look how much he starts to work down, rotate through those hips like we've talked about, starts the shallow. And then what we're going to see, it's very, very subtle, but I think this is where his neck issues have come from. Watch the peak of his hat. So it moves, and then you'll see it's very subtle, but can you see how that head starts to work this way? Watch. Can you see that subtle move, how the peak of the hat. I'll just draw a couple of lines on there and zoom in a little bit more. Watch how this peak of the hat is here. And then as he moves, can you see how 
he sort of rotates his head. So his head's moving this way while his torso is moving this way. You see that, that subtle move there? So that is gonna create a lot of compressive forces through that cervical spine. And I'm sure that's where he's creating that injury from. And I'd probably say it, it could be musculature, but it could also be a vertebrae just because that, that motion of that sort of talking, the neck's going one way and then the thoracic spine's going the other way. So that cervical spine is just taking an absolute batter in there. So from an injury perspective, as he's getting a bit older, that's probably where it's come from. Now, what it does also do though, is because he's creating that counterclockwise move of the neck and the torso, it'll create a tremendous amount of stretch through that lead shoulder, which creates a ton of speed. You'll see as he comes down here, just look at that position. That right knee's moved inwards, that left knee's moved toward the target. He's creating loads of lag. That trail arm is below the lead arm. Great position for power, just move into a similar position. You can see how much that leg's kicked inwards and then he'll start to really, really rotate that lead hand down, creating that flexion, creating that lag to square off the club face. And you can see here, you can almost see how his eyes are almost back here. And we'll have a look from face on. Again, I think, can you see that? How those eyes are moving this way? I think this is where he creates some issues in that neck or cervical region, but you'll see Tremendous amount of rotation through those hips with not a great deal of torso movement. You can see here, look, look how square those shoulders are. You will see how much that torso has rotated this way, but the shoulders haven't rotated as much. If you look at somebody like Rory, those shoulders are massively, massively open, but it's just a different move, more of a traditional move from Hideki. You'll see with that weaker grip, let's see what happens here. Nice bit of rotation through the forearms to square it up. Again, you can see, look how much that head is staying down. That's again, contributing to the, look at it there. Look at that face on view. Look how that head's moving back. And that's just creating a tremendous amount of torque through that spine and what's well, probably contributing to injury. But you see now really extends through those arms and releases the club just because he is a little bit weaker in that grip. We're not gonna see tremendous amounts of body rotation and passive sort of squaring through the hands. He's gonna be a little bit more active with the hands, really releasing out. Reminds me a lot of Jason Day here. It's old fashioned move, if, if we can even call it that, but loads of extension and you can see, look how much that right hand is wrapping over the left just because of that weaker grip. I think that's why you see Hideki a lot of the times uses a lot of um, hand action. So you see a lot of him where he's swirling that helicopter finish, dropping the club. Just think that's a lot to do with how much he does use the hands in the swing. You see nice extension through. Look at that width there. And again, look how much that neck is almost side bending through the shot gonna create a tremendous amount of issues I think around this trail side I'm just guessing but with that move I think that's where his issues are coming from but look at that width you know, very Jason Day X really really wide follow through I love that you can definitely see sort of Tiger Butch Harmon sort of 2000 influence because no doubt Hideki would have grown up idolizing Tiger in 2000s, as we all did. Really, really great swing. Love this guy's action. I do think that neck injury is definitely coming from this little downswing motion here. But very, very powerful move. I think this guy's going to win multiple majors, not just the Masters. He's just won at Riviera. Love his swing. Again, if you like this analysis, don't forget to check out the link in the description for a bit of a discount. Any questions, please leave a comment and a like and subscribe would be really appreciated. Thank you.